off the field, I'm still the same person that I've always been. Uh, but on the field, I did have to be a different person. The kids that I was training with, and a lot of them would come off the, you know, council estate, and they're fighting for their whole family's future, right? I had to train myself to get into that mindset because I, you know, I was too nice, and I was just a bit like, after you, you know, it's one of those. It's like, <laughs> I thank my dad every day for that, and he, he gave me some harsh lessons in in life. And I went into the, to, 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 to being a footballer with my eyes open. I've stood on terraces, and, you know, I've, I've heard chants of, you know, everyone who plays football, you, you put yourself out there to get shot at, right? So, and I was no different. I'm probably a front man trapped in a footballer's body, really. Right. Like, I, I should have been on Build stage. your band. Who, who would be in it? I want to say Liam, but I'm on lead vocals. Right. So I can't have Liam. But I'll have Noel. Welcome to Home Time and Absolute Radio. Peter Crouch, how are you? Yes, I'm good. Thanks for having me. You love your music. You should be at home here. I am, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've done, I do the 90s, 80s, 70s. I do, I, do, I do the lot. Seen you at festivals. We'll come, we'll come back onto that later. Um, let's talk about your film, that Peter mm. Crouch film. How did this come about? Because, like, mm. anyone that is going to watch this, one of the first things that you say in it is... Is anyone going to watch this? So <laughs> it suggests to me that it might not have been your idea. Mm. No, not, not at all. I mean, listen, <laughs> imagine like how, what kind of person I'd have to be to go to people and go, <laughs> you should make a film about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not that person. No. Uh, so, I don't think anyone would think uh, you're that no, person. No, I'm not. So, I, yeah, they can't, obviously, like, then obviously I'll think, usually these films are kind of about, you know, like, a l top, top, top. And, I, yeah, I know I'd have played at the top level, but um, there's people with far better careers than me. But I think mine is in quite interesting. Um, and, and obviously having, you know, seen it um, back, uh, I'm really proud of it because there are times where it was really difficult and times that I came through. And, you know, and the stuff I'm doing now is pretty different as well and it's taken a turn. So, um, yeah, there's lots of twists and turns. It's not just like I was, I was good and, I, and then I was brilliant. It was, you know, I went non-league, I went to Sweden on loan. Yeah. I, I did various things I had to come through to get where I got to. Well, there's some predictable themes in it, obviously, football and uh, height. Um, was there never any thought that, like, there could be a fast bowler or a, a mm. basketball player in you, or was it always football? Or was there anything, like, non-sporting that you thought? Yeah, no, I think, I think obviously, football was my main passion. I, you know, I just, I just loved it from the moment I watched it from the, for the first time. The 1990 World Cup was a, was a massive inspiration for me. You know, Paul Gascoigne and the whole Italia 90 with, with the players, and it just kind of blew my mind. And I, I watched every goal when I was a kid. Um, but I played tennis. Tennis was my other game. There was no no cricket, unfortunately. But but I played a lot of tennis, and I got to a level with with tennis and football where I was quite similar. And but but football was always going to be my main passion. And um, you know, I'm glad I I pursued it. Yeah, 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 definitely. Despite like as you say, as as comes comes across in the film, despite to begin with, um, and certainly through sort of like the first part of your career, uh, a lot of tough times that come with it, and obviously. Height for you, mm. it's obvious when you see it. I think mm. these guys have uh, even managed to underestimate mm. your height because they put the chair ridiculously low in the studio, <laughs> but that's by the by. But mm. um, it, it brought about a lot of abuse mm. and, and labels. How mentally strong did you have to be, or, or would you indeed say that you are? Yeah, I think um, yeah, having thick skin is something that y you certainly need. And I think, you know, it's similar to being on the playground. I think that kind of shaped me early on, you know, because I was different. I was, I was incredibly tall and I've always been, I've always been kind of head above everyone else always so I didn't just shoot up it was something that I learned to live with early um, and it wasn't like um, you know it's, it's, it's probably not seen as a bad thing but to me you just as a teenager you just want to fit in you just mm. want to be like everyone else and I think certainly on a football I don't want this kind of film to be a sob story you know I didn't want it to be um, oh feel sorry for me in, in those times but because um, I went into the to, 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 to being a footballer with my eyes open I've stood on terraces and you know, I've, I've heard chants of, you know everyone who plays Football, you you put yourself out there to get shot at, right? So and I was no different, um, but it still doesn't make it any kind of easier, really. Mm. So certainly, as a, when I was a young player coming through, it was hard to kind of deal with those kind of chants or um, people's misconception of me, you know, because I didn't look like a footballer, but I knew I had the ability and I had the the inner sort of self belief, and I had good people around me, um, which kind of helped me through that time. And you know, I'm very. It makes me kind of even more proud that um, you know I've got. 
gone on to achieve what I, what I have done. Uh, you say talk about good people around you. Um, your your dad's uh, an integral part in the film, mm. um, and is obviously been an integral part in in your life mm. and and career. Um, he he says at points in it that. Um, you're too nice mm. and, and, and gives you some sort of like quite harsh lessons to try and toughen you up. But it's, it's weird because when you're sat here right now, you are a nice guy and you have managed to achieve all these things. So mm. on that respect, was your dad wrong about being too nice? Because you don't have to be, you don't have to be an ass mm. to get where you've got, do you? Yeah, I, I totally agree uh, with with what you're saying. Definitely not. Like off the field, I'm still the same person that I've always been. Uh, but on the field, I did have to be a different person, and I had to kind of, I had to, you know, I was I was from quite a nice. Uh, I had a nice upbringing. You know, we lived in quite a nice house. I went to quite a, quite a nice school. Um, but then I look at the kids that I was training with, and a lot of them would come off the you know council estate, and um, and they're fighting for their whole family's future, right? So I had to play like I was in that situation you know like it, it's like if things got tough it would have been easy for me to go oh do you know what I don't fancy this whereas they're like no no this is this is for everyone this is you know this is like their life depended on it and they were going into tackles they were going into challenges with that kind of mindset I had to train myself to get into that mindset because I you know I was too nice and I was just a bit like after you you know it's one of those it's <laughs> like I had to train myself to be someone else but I thank my dad every day for that and he, he gave me some harsh lessons in in life um, um, and and but but I thank him every day for that because I wouldn't be sat here now without that. Um, and and he made things kind of he let me make my own decisions. But that that period between sort of fifteen and twenty one, I think, is so important for for to shape a, a person's life. Um, and if you're dedicated in that period of time, when a lot of people are going out to parties and losing focus, I was probably more focused than than ever. Um, and I think that's why I kind of made it as a footballer and watched so many people kind of fall away. It would be really easy to to say, oh, what advice would you give to kids right now that like you know want to pursue uh, time in sport or, or 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 anything as a dream? But I'm not going to kid ourselves that there are kids listening to Home Time and Absolute Radio. So I think it'd be more more interesting to actually find as a parent. Um, you know, you have your children, but you've you've had that career. What kind of parental advice would you give to like parents that are listening that have that have got a kid that's got a dream, but you know, as a parent, that's a tough one to pursue. It's a, it's a difficult balance, isn't it, for encouraging? Yeah, it really is. And you know, there's parts of obviously my mum and dad that, that, that I would take, and and obviously try and adapt them to to my own kids. I think the most important thing is a, is a passion for it, is a love for it, um, and I think if you make it enjoyable certainly in the early ages, then that will capture the imagination. And uh, quite often a teacher or, you know, a Sunday league coach or if someone with who gives you that kind of room to enjoy football and, and not make it a job so early. You know, sometimes I see kids at like 10, 11, 12 and they're getting drilled every day. And, they're like, you know, it's like you have to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to, you know, do that, you've got to work on your left foot, your right foot. That, that age, it's about enjoyment, and that you know, it's only till around fourteen that things start ramping up. And if you've got a talent, then I think you know you can start being harder on them and a bit more like, no, you need to be focused, you need to be disciplined, and mm. teach them that way. And um, what my dad was really, really good at was letting me make my own decisions. You know, at that age, kind of fifteen, sixteen, you think you know what you want, right? But you know, definitely your parents know better, but you can't allow them. To, to you can't tell them that it's yeah. hard to tell your kid this is what you've got to do so he used to do is like um, if there was a party on a Friday night or something out of the game on a Saturday he'd be like uh, I'd say yeah I'm going to go to this party and he'd say uh, well, yeah, yeah no, by all means like, go for it you know, do you think the other boys are doing that that are playing tomorrow and I'd go well probably not <laughs> and he'd go well what well, do you think you should and I'd go Probably not. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like my own. I'd made my own decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was so clever. And then I'd think, right, do you know what? I'm not going. And I'd go, no, it's, this is my decision. I'm not going. Yeah. And but he had planted the seed to yeah. to, to make me be a you know that person. 
Your wife, Abby's obviously also um, been a massive support to you. Um, and you, you can just tell, like, the moment you met her, you kind of think, right, here's a keeper. Mm. Um, <laughs> but one of the interesting things that I, I found watching the film is she's she's empowered you to keep all your shirts. Mm. Now, this is speaking as someone who had an ex who got rid of all my old Arsenal shirts. Oh, and I've never played. Spurs um, fan, would you? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have, out of all the shirts that you've kept, do you have one, if you could, like, I don't know, a catastrophe? in the house you've got to take one shirt which one are you saving do you know what is there's two finals that I played in that would obviously stick out in my head and that's the FA Cup final and yeah. Champions League final I'd like to take the Champions League final one but we lost that in Athens in 2007 um, so I'd take the FA Cup one because it's embroidered with the gold you know embroidery of, of, of FA Cup um, winners uh, 2006 um, so that's the prob- probably the one I'd take. Yeah. Um, but then there's you know my first England shirt again, which was quite special. Um, so I'll try and nick two. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. <laughs> Hopefully, whatever um, mythical catastrophe mm. I've just come up with for that question has not come about from your cooking, because mm. that gets a bit of a kick in a uh, in the film. Uh, I'd want to defend you for pesto and pasta because I think that's a meal of kings. Um, now that you have retired. Has your cooking had the chance to get better? And what would you consider to be your signature dish? Um, Unfortunately, it hasn't got much better. If anything, it's got worse. Because, I mean, in those days, I was living on my own and uh, I had to sort of, like, come up with something. Um, (laughs) So now, now Abby's a really good cook and... um, I, I sort of leave her to it, really. Yeah. Uh, I wish I was better, and I and I speak to to, to a lot of people who, who find it really therapeutic. And when they hear when I hear them talk about cooking, I think, yeah, actually, you know, they get away and they have a cup, you know, a glass of wine, and they just, you know, they 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 unwind with it. I mean, that's really alien to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie; I can't <laughs> see that uh, at all. I get stressed out. I'm like, what am I chopping for? Oh, it's like that's gone wrong. There's timings. I don't get it. Personally. So pesto and pasta is it's still... still the dish, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a long-winded way of saying it's still the dish. I'll Garnish it with a bit of parmesan on top. Uh, that save it. Do you know what? They, I, I, do, I do an omelette for my kids in the morning sometimes on the weekend. And they love it. They're like, Daddy's special omelette. And the only reason it's special is because I'm brilliant at folding. <laughs> like, so, so I get it all in there and I get the fold right <laughs> and they love it. So that's, that's probably the go-to now. Football career done podcasts of obviously the film that peter crouch film which is on uh, prime video right now what is next uh the peter crouch mm. band you love your music what mm. what what is next do you know what i just I, like, i'm a, i'm a, probably a front man trapped in a footballer's body really right like i i should have been on build stage. your band who, who, who would be in it well i'd have i'd have serge from yeah. Sabian. um I want to say Liam, but I'm on lead vocals, right. so I can't have Liam. But I'll have Noel, probably. Um, drums, Taylor Hawkins, probably. Yeah. Um, you know, um, who else would I have? I'll probably have Abby as a, as a as kind of female vocalist, backing singer. She's the best voice I've ever heard, by the way. Wow. And, 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 and like, it's just a shame that no one knows about it, you know? Yeah. Uh, incredible at karaoke. Uh, so she'd be involved because uh, she'd come on tour as well. Um, I've, thought, I've not thought about it much. Well, <laughs> you've not thought about it much, but we have just built that Peter Crouch band. So <laughs> I think we all know what is the next project. Peter, it's been great to have you in on the show. Thank you so much for coming in. And uh, that Peter Crouch film is on Prime Video right now, and it's a great watch. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.